What is it about your hobby that keeps you coming all the way out here? Is it the freedom of wandering in search of that perfect spot? You've made your own path through these hills. Tasted the fresh water of our lakes, our rivers. You've been on the water with friends at sunrise and helped the locals long past sunset. But you just keep coming back. At this spot, you got a pretty good idea what's lurking beneath the surface. But there's only one way to find out. Whether it's the one you write home about or the one that gets away, that feeling is what gets you up. That whether it's your first time or your hundredth time, you never know what you're gonna catch until it's caught. Call of the Wild. The Angler. Buck here. How are we? Welcome to my house. We're on a new mission. Right? I've been waiting for this game to come out. I got installed about an hour after release. I've been playing it ever since. I've been playing it since the 31st. Um, let's just say I've made a hell of a stab at it. There, there is a lot involved in this game. <clears throat> it's not just a fishing game. It's an adventure. It's, it's a total adventure. Um, there's way more things to do. It's a learning experience. I'm from America. I, I, I've been here. I, I've been to Yellowstone. And it, it, it's, it's a phenomenal place on Earth. Absolutely phenomenal. Some guys bitch and scream about, I've seen some videos already about the water. Water looks bad. Well, you know, that's probably because you're from Europe and you've never fished in America. The water looks fine everywhere in here uh, where it needs to be sandy and mucky it is where it needs to be crystal clear it is um this, this game is about i can only imagine what it would be like if i could turn my turn everything up to high i've got it on low and i've got a hell of a system and uh, <laughs> the graphics i have to turn down low it's I, it, my my gpu loads running it when i play this game at 98 percent and then when I throw a recording software on top of it, wow. So anyway, if you really want to get the full aspect of this, I hope you got a good system. Well, that being said, what I tried to do here in this first video, and I've got about four of them, I've got four of them lined up, but this is the first one I got done editing. We're gonna, the first one is gonna be what, like my tours. However, I do throw a little bit of fishing but it's a little bit long it's a half an hour long but I tried to give you a tour of everything I was able to unlock in five days um, and, and give you a good dose of what what you can get to what what you can do and at the end I don't know if I'm gonna do it at, at the end of this video or the beginning of the next one but I've already found the secrets it's pretty much on how to level up quick how to, how to make good money, how to get some poles, and how to have a lot of fun. But, you know, it's not just fishing. So if you're a hardcore fisherman with this game, it's not Fishing Planet, that's for sure. Um, it, but it's got some works, and we've got a new hot, hot fix coming out. A bug fix is already out. I haven't installed it yet, but that's going to be cool. So we'll see. They, they're adding, you know, a little better, a little better fish tactics fish response, bait response, so there's, I, I looked at the notes, it, it looks pretty good, it's on, it's on its way, I mean, they concentrated mainly on, this world is, is unbelievable, the waterways, the, there's so much to fish, I fished for five days, and I've did more exploring, and just fished enough to, you know, get, get a couple of good bowls, and, and make some money, you know, but you 
can make money other ways. You don't have to fish in this game to make money. And that's what I'm going to, I'm going to show you about. I'm going to teach you that in the next video, but not on this one. So with this one, it's just a matter of, here's the tour. Here's what this game is all about. Here's what it looks like. And uh, so back your cooler. Get back in your easy chair. What? Go do it. It's called Wild. Reserve. What's in the name, huh? Well, this one dates all the way back to the late 18th century. French trappers named the park Cret d'Or. When explorers first entered the region in 1805, they met the Nez Pierce, Crow, and Shoshone tribes in the area. After fighting with the tribes, trappers reported features of the park today, such as petrified trees, boiling mud, and steaming rivers, which at the time were dismissed as delirium. I'm not 
Even up until the 1850s, mountain men who reported back the providence of the park were made out to be yarn spinners, corroborating nothing more than a fable. It wasn't until after the conclusion of the Civil War that a detailed exploration took place, revealing that the tales of the so-called liars were indeed very real.
history of the park isn't all wonderful, though. I'm ashamed to say that during the 1870s, the natives were excluded from the park by a treaty that my ancestors dishonorably reneged on. the right to hunt within the park. That was a right that was forcibly ripped away from them. It's one of the many reasons it's so important to me today to do everything we can to work with their descendants.
The legacy and history of the Native Americans in Golden Ridge Reserve is of great cultural significance to America, as well as me personally. We work with many groups to help preserve and champion that legacy here at the park. and arrived on the scene. Under the approval of President Ulysses S. Grant, Nathaniel V. Johnson became the first custodian of the now National Park Golden Ridge Reserve. And it's my distinct privilege to be able to wear that mantle, passed down to me through generations.
allows proper irrigation of the surrounding farmland. And while I wouldn't say it's as grand as some of the other sites in the park, it's a monument of sorts. Unfortunately, that monument releases greenhouse gases, deprives ecosystems of nutrients, destroys habitats, raises sea levels, wastes water, but... Ah, hey, best of a bad bunch.
further back than the books go. Mountain men exploring the area came back with tall tales of bubbling mud and steaming rivers, leading to high ridicule from their despondent comrades. It seems nature's gems were dismissed as pure delirium. But further expeditions and explorations elucidated the matter better than words ever could. The stories were real. And the beautiful, bubbling geysers were our park's very own wonder. The history of our hot springs as a hot property goes back to 1906. And one Gregoire Lacroix, a French-Canadian immigrant who staked a mining claim on the banks of this here park. What he found himself in was a spot of hot water. And much like that Archimedes fella, soon dunked to something craft. Riverbank hot tubs were the first place his mind went. And soon folk from all over were following along. Decades later, mud ain't the only thing heating up. Turns out Mother Nature's bounty ain't half easy to make a few pennies off. Now, but hey, what can you do? They treat me nicer than any other parasites I got, and they never forget my birthday, which is more than I can say for my tape work. Well, guys, that's it for this one. I fished this place. No, I can't say I fished it. I played this game hard for a solid week. I learned how to level up, learned how to get equipment. I'm, I, I fished, don't get me wrong, you know, Buck. I fished. Um, and I leveled up. I think I'm level 33 or something like that. I got myself a 4x4 four four and a boat. And the game's got some glitches, though. I bought a, a bass. I bought a bass rod and a reel. And when I got done buying it, it gave me. I bought a nice heavy bass rod. I, I ended up with two tiny little spinning rods and, and two four pound spinning reels. Now, the bass reel I bought, I have that in my tackle box, but I have these two, I had these two shitty rods and they wouldn't even let me sell them. And I spent thousands of dollars on, on, on the bass rod, but you know, I don't have it, but you know, that's, that's part of the game. Um, when you jump on something so early. The bugs aren't all worked out of this thing yet. It'll get a lot better. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed some of this. I got I got a lot of footage. I have five days of footage. Um, I've got the, the trial lakes to catch the diamonds, the silvers, and this fishing's pretty easy. So I concentrated more, like I said. This is more of a, a uh, an adventure game. I, I enjoy this kind of stuff a lot. There's so much to see. They, they, they put so much of it in. It's just, it's, un, it, it, it's unbelievable. And so they don't have to work hard at all on the CGI, the water, the, the land. 
I mean, I, 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 I'm I, gonna upgrade my system now just so I can play this shit on Ultra. I, I mean, that's just not cool. I, now, I know it's old, but I should have been better than this. These games caught up with Buck. I've been out of the business too long. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. We got plenty more now. We're not just doing Fishing Planet, which by the way, we've got one more coming there, but this is Call of the Wild, the Angler, and we're going to have a lot of fun with this one. I don't yet know how to, there's a lot of missions, a lot of things to do. Remember the name of the lakes. I can tell you that right now, and I'll explain that more in my next video. Um, that's going to mean a lot in completing missions around here because they don't give you a lot of clues. They show you a picture. You know where this is? Go catch a fish there. So, they, um, they, they got you geared up a lot on exploring this open world it's a hiking game it's an adventure game and they use fishing to get all of us fishing guys in there <laughs> but i'm a fishing guy that likes to do this i've been to wyoming I've, I've been to a lot of these mountains i skied a lot of them so we'll see you next time and remember keep your cooler full of ice and never ever give up the fight we'll see you later into the creek, it's